Hello, and welcome to the Connectedness Podcast. Just as you might have guessed, I talk about connection and connectedness on this podcast, our connection with everything in the world around us. Whether you see it or not, we're all connected, and it doesn't matter if it's our dog, our cat, our God, our body, and I'll also talk about some more abstract connections like our career or our land, our community, our emotions, your body. Life is all about connection, so the sooner we recognize that, the sooner we can have an easier, more meaningful life. I will talk about these connections through different lenses, things like synchronicities and coincidences, or just everyday little bits of magic and miracles that we we usually dismiss. It's really important that we pay attention to all of this so we can live an easier, more meaningful life. So welcome to the show. I'm your host, Karen Cleveland. Welcome back to the show, everyone. I am really excited to introduce my guest today because I have been kind of following her, reading up on her, and she's super interesting, kind of an amazing, interesting backstory, how she started life, and of course, full of empowerment tips and tools. My guest today is Catherine DeMonte. She is a licensed marriage, family, and child therapist, providing integral counseling in California for over 25 years. She's also the author of a book called Beep, Beep, Get Out of My Way, Seven Tools for Living Your Unstoppable Life, which I want to get into. What a great title. And (laughs) the founder of The Abundance Circle, offering workshops all over the U.S. to bring the one big thing into your life that you've been longing for. And, And I really love this. Her goal is to help clients feel less triggered, more empowered, and more inspired to live joy filled lives. Her approach centers on giving clients tools to deal with the blocks on their path so that they can see that events don't happen to us, they happen for us. Mm -hmm. Everything that happens in our life is an opportunity for our growth, healing, and expansion. All right, so I'd love to welcome to the show. Welcome, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate appreciate being here. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Now, reading from your website, I know a few things about you. You started out your professional practice as a therapist. So what brought you into therapy? What's kind of the background that took you there? And then we Mm -hmm. can discuss how you went on from there in in a few minutes. Sure. Well, thank you. Yes. I think I knew in high school, I wanted to be a therapist. All the adults that I knew that I liked the most and felt closest to were therapists. Not that we had a lot of them in my circle, but my, my parents circle, but there were a couple of them and they were extraordinary women. They were wise and kind and they just, they just seemed to know so much. So that inspired wow. me. And that inspired me to take a psychology class, which I loved and thought that I knew then that that's what I wanted to do. That was sort of my, my start. And okay. once I was in the field, I completely fell in love with it. It's, it's an incredible field in my opinion. Yeah, it is. I, I mean, necessary and helpful at the same time. So, but you kind of go beyond the scope of what a a normal therapist, like if I were to go to my therapist down the street, I might not get some of the same tools and et cetera that you offer. What was that journey like for you? I originally did more typical as well. And I still do that most of the time. But if a client is open to the spiritual side of things, I really, really love working with that. What, What the lessons are, what's trying to show up what's trying to emerge and needs looking at. I like bringing in things like meditation, intention setting, things like that. Watching our thoughts. I really believe in the power of uh, manifestation and, and how we can attract what we want. So I bring that in as well. And that's what the abundance circles are about too, by the way. That's beautiful. So you. did you, did that follow your personal path or was that part of you when you started professionally? And then you decided to incorporate it? Or how did your spiritual journey begin? It start well, the, in terms of the practice for you to, to answer your, the first part of your question, I originally didn't have it as part, but I noticed in my own life that, that money kept being tight for my husband and for me. And so travel wasn't happening. We could, could make the, the, the regular bills and get those paid and make regular payments on things and stay pretty caught up but we kept not being able to travel. That was my one big thing. 
And so for other people, it might be finding a partner. Maybe mm -hmm. they have a, a job they love, but they wish they had a partner to share life with. Or they're married, but money's really tight. And so that's their one big thing they want to attract. So that was sort of the impetus. That's a good example of things don't happen to us and happen for us because the right. lack of being able to have enough to do things together and travel was the the catalyst for me looking more inward. Why is it, why does this keep happening? That's always out of reach. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why is this happening to me? I, mm -hmm. I felt that way too at one point in my life. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's hard to look at sometimes, but, but necessary. What are some of the tools or the methods or how do people identify that kind of story that they have? Mm. Limiting belief? I think the way people start identifying it is looking at the thing that keeps coming up that they're pointing a finger at. Like if that thing over there stopped happening, then I'd be okay. Mm. And instead of what does it bring up for me that that's not happening? Right. It's sort of easy to see that this thing or this person causes me distress, as opposed to that distress brings up, I didn't feel loved enough as a child, or I felt abandoned, or I have some trauma. If, if we turn the lens this way instead and go into what that material brings up, that's, that's where it's juicy and that's where the good stuff is. And so that's sort of, sort of how I introduce it is getting them to change their, their focus from the outside to, to here. And the best way to do that, in my opinion, is to see how it feels familiar, how the going without feels like what that brings up and how that's familiar or how the way somebody's responding to us, what that feels like and how that might feel familiar. And then mm. what story we told about ourselves, given that behavior. So for example, if we feel abandoned by a partner or we aren't dating and wish we were, and that makes us feel alone, what does that bring up in your childhood? And then what does that experience in your childhood, what did it tell you or what did you tell yourself about yourself, Right. about that happening? Like I'm not enough or I'm too much. And stories like that, those limiting beliefs and faulty stories that we, we go away with that were never true about us. Right, right. I'm just curious, and maybe my listeners are too. You are a child therapist, family mm -hmm. and, and child, children. Do you help children identify some of these right now, like as their children, so they don't have to wait until they're adults and then have to figure mm -hmm. it out then? Yeah. Or is that I'm, outside of the scope of a of a child therapist job? Well, through through play, and th I used to have in my I don't have my office anymore because I had to leave it from after the pandemic started. But I had two sand trays with miniatures, and children could work out their their issues with it. I, I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's a young a little young bit. Man. Yeah. <laughs> so with children, it was nice because I didn't have to directly say. That, that that's not true or uh -huh. when did you first believe that but they could work it out uh -huh. their play, um, and that's how how I worked it with children it's so it's a little different than working with adults where I'm a lot more direct or getting them to look inward this way children right. got it out but it was amazing to see how effective that that is because really? changes would happen mm -hmm. like if they were angry and worked out things in the in the sand tray with miniatures or if they were mm. depressed and worked out things, it changed, oh. yeah, it changed their behavior. Yeah, and that could change the whole trajectory of their life, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. That's important. It's it's mm -hmm. too bad more children can't get the assistance they need when, yeah. when they're young. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah it would save a lot of time, <laughs> a lot of work <laughs> in therapy later. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> So your book, let me bring up the name of it again. I know it's Beep, Beep, Get Out of My Way. So Seven Tools for Living Your Unstoppable Life. If I remember correctly on the cover, there's a little red Volkswagen Beetle. Is that right? <laughs> yes, there is. So yeah. that's so cute. So Beep, Beep, Thank Get out, out of My Way. So not only I want to know about the book, but the title, Get uh -huh. Out of My Way. What is that referring to? Well, thank you for asking. I love that question. It refers to when I noticed when people were in the abundance circle, they did always attract the thing that was missing for them. Like if it was a partner or more financial gain, or I want to get out of the States and move someplace, but I don't have enough money, but they still found a way that was their big thing. The thing that 
okay. was missing okay. in their life, the thing that hurt not to have. Yeah. But when it showed up, they were unstoppable because I feel like they knew if they oh. if, if they realized I I finally got this big thing, I can get the small things. <laughs> I can do anything. Yeah. I'm yeah. really on fire. I'm really lit up. Yeah. There, there's, I shouldn't, I shouldn't quantify it like big and little things because I did notice that people could always, almost always attract a parking spot in a crowded right. <laughs> parking right. lot if they wanted to okay. um, they'd call on their parking lot angel and it, magically a spot would show up. Yeah. There is a reason I think that we can attract the smaller things it's because we're not attached that much to the outcome. It would just be really nice to get one. Oh. But when we really, really, really want a partner or we really, really are afraid if more money doesn't come in, I'm going to lose my house. I, I'm really panicked about this. I really, really hope universe. Oh. There's kind of a grip on it. There's kind right. of a instead of, I really wish a spot would show up. Right. That kind of energy is actually necessary. You have to really know what you want and define it very clearly, but then let it go. But mm -hmm. when it's the big thing that we really would love, that would make a difference in our life, we have a, an anxious energy around it, kind of. But I can't live without this energy. And the universe goes, okay, I got it. You, you're really anxious about this and I'm matching your energy. Yeah. I'm matching your energy that it can't come or I'm afraid it won't come. You get more of afraid of it not coming you get more of that if that makes sense but when people, yeah it and when makes people, a lot of sense yeah go good, ahead it's about vibration isn't it yeah. yeah yeah so when people realize they can attract it there was no stopping them <laughs> there is fascinating no. yeah then okay, so yeah. left and right so get out of my way man i'm moving I feel uh -huh, that's right uh -huh, yeah <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Thank so, you. And, and then it includes tips in it and, and manifesting tools, right? Inside the mm -hmm. book itself. So what yeah. makes it what makes it a unique book then? To, thank you. The thing to me that made it different than other things I'd read or watched on mani manifesting was shadow work, which is a Carl Jung technique of knowing what's our, our deepest trigger, the thing that makes us, the, the parts we hide from ourselves. That's why it's in our shadow. I found if without doing that, that when I tried to manifest before knowing more about the shadow, that I tried everything I heard on the secret and everything I'd read about. Right. I tried to be positive. I did my affirmations. I visualized. I did vision boards and, and travel for me still wasn't showing up. The, the money for traveling. Mm -hmm. And then I felt bad that I couldn't get that right. So I felt kind of depressed mm. that I was doing every doing everything and it wasn't showing up. So it, there was, it felt like a failure. I think doing the shadow work becomes really important when we're doing, trying to do manifestation because it can't come in if it bumps into our shadow. So, so shadow, what mm -hmm. does that mean, the shadow? So, and how does it bump into our shadow? Mm -hmm. So my unconscious beliefs, which would be in my shadow, are things like I'm not enough okay. or I'm too much okay. or who am I to have? Mm -hmm. And that might come from, let's say we had an older brother or older sister who was sort of the star of the family. And we kind of recognized that the whole family kind of accepted that. So we felt like things don't get to happen for me. Right. But that's okay. I'm just sort of used to it. I understand that they're that football star or a, a bright student. So, and I'm not that, but that's okay. I'm, a, I'm an okay person, but in my shadow is I don't get to have, or good things happen to other people. Okay. So I, shadow means that the parts of ourself that are rejected or hidden from okay. our view. So okay. it's really, really underground. We wow. just got used to behaving in a certain way or seeing ourselves a certain way or believing a certain thing. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so, so those when, are our limiting beliefs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Limiting beliefs either about the world or about ourselves. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah. An example of how a shadow can show up would be, you know, let's say you were a cute little girl singing in your hair, into your hairbrush in front of the mirror, and you, were really, you, you just were enjoying it and lost in the moment. And a parent walked by and said, don't be so vain. We might not know what vain meant, but we knew that was bad. Yeah. So we would try really hard to never be vain, but that would mean we'd also lack confidence or sharing good news about ourselves. 
we and we would despise that trait in other people. So mm-hmm. we'd make sure we were never ever vain. But you can imagine how that can block us too from showing up more fully in life. Right. But it's in our right. shadow. We're completely unaware of it being there. It went underground so early. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and that's interesting what you say about it showing up in other people and us not liking it in other people either. Is mm-hmm. that, that's so it's always a good I'm indic- not liking something in you. I need to make sure I look at, at myself in that, right? Exactly. It's like what we learned when we were little, like if you point a finger at somebody, you have three others pointing back. Uh-huh. <laughs> it might be a trait that most of us don't like, but if we're actually triggered by it, that means it's probably in our shadow. So okay. where in where in me do I have that trait? <laughs> right. <laughs> so right. sometimes people will say, I would never do that thing. It's not about the behavior. It's about the trait. Yeah. Okay. The mm-hmm. trait. That mm-hmm. makes sense. Interesting. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then how do we shift one of those beliefs? How do we deal with that once we so, discover it? Yeah, that's a good question. One way is to bring what's in our shadow up to the light of consciousness and then find out where it's positive opposite is so if it's vanity that's in our shadow would want to learn how we could be competent because that might be that we don't like judgmental people like I would never be so judgmental well first of all I might be being judgmental of judgmental people (laughs) if that's in my shadow but if we don't if we really get triggered by people who are judgmental that might be in our shadow so maybe we turn that into instead of calling it judgmental we might call it discernment like I'm going to be very discerning about the people I hang out with, or I'm going to be discerning about who okay. I let into my space, things like that. Okay. Because what's in our shadow, when it's flipped to its opposite positive trait, it can actually be our strongest trait, our most mm-hmm. powerful trait. So it's important to do the work on that. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah. really pr- make us more confident in whatever, whatever it is then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And the book has a chapter on really simple ways to, to find what's in your shadow, specifically, and then how to turn it around. It's really not as hard as as one would think either. It's not as yeah, yeah. When done this way. So and then you also go into this in your abundance circles as well. Yes, uh it's one of the seven tools. Okay. All right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I, I saw that one of the tools or one of the things you talk about is receiving. Yes. Now it seems like that would be easy to do. Uh, <laughs> one would think, but it's actually quite hard. We just, and women are, I don't mean to generalize, but we're especially bad at it. We uh-huh. even have dif- a difficult time receiving a compliment. Oh, you isn't know? that like, true? Yeah. Yes. If somebody says, oh, I like what you're, you know, what you've done with your hair. Really? I was just going to cut it. Or right. I like your dress. That's really pretty. Really? I got it at Ross. It was 10 yeah, bucks. Exactly. Like, like, I paid $10 for it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What's that about? But it's yeah. really important that we receive because if we're asking the universe to say some, send something and we can't receive, it can't send the big stuff if we can't receive something like a compliment or help, help out with groceries. Sometimes we have big, big bags of groceries. And the, the bag were asked if we need help. It's so much more likely that we'll say, no, thank you. I've got yeah, it. Yeah. Then yes, please. That would be awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. I also read somewhere a long time ago that we're more likely to serve everyone else the better cuts of, well, I don't mm-hmm. eat meat, but the better cuts of meat at dinner or the, the mm-hmm. best food at dinner and we take what's left over. Yeah. So that sounds like, very that typical about? of a lot of women. Yeah. We yeah. have we hear so many messages about about receiving or how it might be bad, like it is better to receive give than to receive and uh, things true. like that. And it looks unkind. Or it might make us feel indebted. Um yeah. you know, like if I if you give to me, so I'd rather not. Or sometimes we may reject a compliment from a man if we wonder what he wants. Right. We don't know him well. There's all kinds of right. stuff gets uh, told around receiving instead of just thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That, that's yeah. what we really need to, to remember to say. Yeah. 
Wow. And, yeah. and how, how do all these things, I mean, we, we have talked a little bit about these beliefs, like singing into the, into the microphone, <laughs> but do they only start in childhood or do these stack up over our lifetime? How do all these limiting beliefs really stick to us? <laughs> I think they stick because they started in childhood. There's a place for it to land. Oh. If you think of the early hurts as maybe being a shelf inside of us, that, okay. that we then tell ourselves a story about ourselves. Then the other things, the other examples that feel similar will land on top of that and build. Oh. So if it's that we're too much or we're in the way or we're greedy or we're bossy or right. we're slow or whatever we've wow. told ourselves, we, yeah. we keep finding what we feel is proof of that. And, and then it becomes confirmation bias, doesn't it? Like, because I keep, getting this proof I know it to be true yeah right that's true it just keeps reinforcing it I guess yeah. so mm -hmm. I also read somewhere on your website about the value of listening deeply do you mm -hmm. want to speak to that yeah thank you I, I mean it both for ourselves and with ourselves and with with others but that's where deeper connection comes from, deeper connection to self and others. So kind of going beneath and beneath and beneath as we're listening to somebody or listening to ourselves. So with ourselves, that might look like, look, I guess the example that came up earlier would be an ex would, would fit here. That comment made me feel this way. And instead of stopping there or just judging them, we might ask when else I when when else have I felt that way? And you're kind of talking to your inner child. Oh which is really imperative in my opinion to really oh. talk. And I like putting a hand on my heart and on my solar plexus or teaching my clients to, to really connect to that part and being still and listening. And sometimes a little memory will come up, just a flicker, and it might not even feel related. But if we listen to that, even like I'm seeing that time when that thing happened, what can you tell me more about that? What happened, what that felt like? What did you tell yourself when that happened about mm. yourself? So they're just sort of peeling away layers of an onion to get to the to the center by listening like that. Wow. Mm -hmm. it, I just felt like the, the energy, just deep listening is really, it's a really a meaningful, em empowering thing for us to do for ourselves. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It actually gets to reparent that place, doesn't it? That's part of the issues that we weren't heard. So deeply listening oh. wrecks for that. And sometimes we can even say that to her and say, I'm listening hmm. or journaling nice. can be a way to listen. If yeah. we do kind of automatic writing, just let what, what wants to come out flow. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. If one of my listeners really likes what, what you're saying, what are the best ways to work with you? So you, I heard you say you closed your therapy practice after COVID or not the practice maybe, but your office. Right, I, but I, I, I do work online. You yeah, do work online. Yeah, which you has have been the, great. You have the abundant circles, and that's all online as well. Yes, it is. And your book? Do you have? Do you do anything else? That's pretty much it. My my book and my abundant circles and the which it, which I love. They're so sweet. They yeah. seem to track the exact right combination of pe of people each time too. That just end up being so close and attracting uh -huh. what they want. It's really, they're very magical. And then my private practice as well. Nice. Nice. Yeah. All right. And I'm, I'll go through your website address at the end. I'm not actually done asking you questions yet, but I was just, uh -huh. I just wanted to get that out there. It's like, how, how do we work with you if we wanted to? So do you have a favorite way to self-educate? What's your favorite method of gaining new information or insights or mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. new that's out there? There are so many beautiful new things out there. There are a couple of firms that put on incredible speakers and workshops. Sand is one, which is science and non-duality and the shift network um, mm -hmm. put on wonderful workshops. I love being on those, listening to people whose work I've followed or am being introduced to for the first time. That's one of the ways I keep learning. Yeah. Yes. I'm also, I, I bet you are too, I, a, a big reader. I, I like reading books on on this topic and these topics yeah mm -hmm. there's not enough time to read books <laughs> no there's I not mean, I mean there's so many good books is what yeah. I mean yeah I haven't mm -hmm. heard of sand before and I'm surprised I'm gonna I'm gonna look that amazing 
Oh, it's yeah. been incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. I'm glad you know of it now. I think you'll like it. So it's, this is why I, lo I love doing this is being able to talk to the people. And instead of someone just going to a website and saying, I don't know anything about this person, getting mm -hmm. to know people a little bit. So they at least if they hear my podcast or another one you're on, at least get an idea of what the person is like. So if there was something you wish everyone in the world knew right now, what would that be? Mm, what a great question. I think it would be that the answer lies within. And I certainly didn't invent that, but I wish people knew it. Yeah. If we get quiet and listen we're asking ourselves what's best for me, <laughs> not just what, what somebody else might say, but what, what do I need to do here? What's, what's in my best and highest good here? If we get still and quiet, we can find it. And I, and I wish people knew that. I think yeah. a lot of us give our authority and power away yeah. by asking others, like, what I, should I do? You don't want to know. I think so too. The answer is within. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, why don't you let us know where we can find you on the internet or anywhere? And also if there's anything else you want to share before we close the show today. <laughs> sure. So where they can find me is at my website, katherinedemonte.com. Catherine's with a C, um, Demonte. My book is available on Amazon or elsewhere. And there's also a journal that goes goes with it oh. if people want, which has been very helpful to, nice. to, to have because yeah. there are prompts in it and beautiful quotes and lots of pages for doing the exercises. Is it recommended that you read the book if you get the journal or can the journal stand alone? It could stand alone, okay. but I think it might be a power, a more powerful manifester yeah. to read the book because it goes deeper into it. The other is more of a creative process around the tools, but okay. I think knowing how they work and, and the exercises in the book might make it what you do in the journal have a little more oomph. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, of course I'll have links on the show notes and on my podcast page as well, but I want to thank you very much for being here today. It was very oh. informational and inspiring oh, of what the work you're doing. So thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you too. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's really a pleasure and an honor. I, I love being with you. All right. Well, thank you. And I'm going to say goodbye to the listeners. We'll talk to you soon. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to head over to RevKarenPodcast.com. That's R-E-V-K-A-R-E-N Podcast.com. There you're going to find the tools for finding more meaning and happiness in your own life. Plus, if you have a story that you want to share with me, either on or off the air, be sure to look for that form. Make sure you follow me so you get notified when new episodes drop. And also, I'd love to connect with you in my Facebook group, Connectedness with Rev Karen. So head over to RevKarenPodcast.com. I hope to see you there.